Before we do the test on a diode, so we're going to just talk about what a diode is, how it's constructed very briefly. They're often called PN junction diodes because they're made of a semiconductor material. Now years ago they used to be germanium and silicon diodes but nowadays almost all diodes are made from silicon. The silicon goes, undergoes a process known as doping. Um, the reason for the doping is to produce silicon material, n-type material and p-type material. The n-type material would have an excess of electrons making it overall negatively charged and the p-type material would have an absence of electrons to remove some of the electrons so its net charge would be positive. When both materials are joined together a depletion layer is formed. What happens is the excess electrons are attracted over to the other side material and the reverse happens with the p-type material and we have a layer, a depletion layer, where there's a very very few charge carriers and what effectively happens is we build up a, a potential difference between both sides of around about 0.6 volts and in order to get the diode to conduct we have to apply a potential of 0.6 volts or greater to get conduction through the diode. Effectively there, there are two ways of connecting a diode up. We have a, a DC supply here. If we connect the positive terminal to the p-type material of the diode and the negative terminal of the supply to the n-type material, you will know from um, magnetics that light poles repel. Well, the same type of thing happens in electronics. What happens is, if we apply negative here, sorry, I beg your pardon, positive here and negative here, we get repulsion of the positive charge carriers across the, deplet the depletion layer, and we get repulsion of the electrons across the other side of the, the depletion layer, and we get, as long as we get 0.6 volts applied, we get conduction through the diode. When we do that, we call it forward biasing the diode. That's the technical name for it, forward biasing a diode. The other condition is called reverse bias. Simply all we do is swap the terminals of the power supply the other way round. Now what happens, we get a traction between the electrons and the power supply in the n-type material and a similar thing happens in the p-type material and the effect is to widen the depletion layer and in reverse bias we usually need a lot more voltage to get a diode to conduct unless it's a zener diode and zener diodes are a special type of diode that are used they have what's called a very low reverse breakdown voltage and it can be as low as a couple of volts for a zener diode and the zener diode is the one that we're going to do the test on today because it's got this low reverse voltage this is the test circuit you're going to build very simple circuit we've got a power supply here I would say that we could comfortably set that at about 5 volts no problem we're going to go in series through an ammeter that's going to measure our current and we're going to plot our current in a table we're going to go through something called a resistance box here, so I've, I've got one to show you here. And we're going to use these top two terminals here. Uh, what you would generally do with a resistance box is set all of the dials before you use it, go fully clockwise with all the dials, and in that instance with this setup like that, you're going to have about a million ohms resistance. Okay, so we're going to use this resistance box, that's going to be this component here. We've also got, a little bit difficult to see, but we've also got the Zener diode. It's very small, but it's got a black band on one end. Okay, I hope you can see that, and if you can't, well, just remember, it's got a black band on one end, and that black band is this bar on the component here. 
So in forward bias, this one's set up in forward bias, we've got positive to the positive type material here, negative to the negative of the power supply. In forward bias, the black band would be here, connected there, like that. And this is the test circuit setup. I've tried to set it up as um, so it's easy to follow as possible. On the um, left hand side over there we have the power supply and then we go through the ammeter, remember through the ammeter, we go to the resistance box, we come out of the resistance box, we go through the xenodiode and we go back to the power supply. Okay, And we've got the multimeter the voltmeter on the right hand side and that's measuring the voltage across the diode like so and we'll just zoom in so you can see it's a little clearer there's the diode resistance box voltmeters power supply okay so the test revolves as we said before, the test revolves around reducing the resistance, so more current flows through the circuit, and then measuring the voltage and the current flowing through the circuit on the two meters there. You'll note that I said five volts. Well, at five volts, going through that resistance box, we have 0 0.54 volts dropped across our diode. That's with a million ohms um, on the resistance box. That goes to show how high the resistance is of the diode. So if we start at five volts there, you take your first measurement, 0 0.54, and that would go in your table there. I've put in, there's a table there. I've put in 0 0.51. You would start at 0 0.54 or 0 0.55. Just depends on, on where we go from. And what we're going to do, we're going to go up in steps of 0.1 of a volt. So the next reading we'd look for is 0 0.55. And to do that, you're going to adjust the dials on the resistance box here. So I'll just do that. And the biggest change would be by, by adjusting the 100K one there. And I've just notched that down, I think, just one more. So two notches, and you can see we've still got no current flowing or no appreciable current flowing and we're at 0.55 and it's the same process so I'm going to put 0.55 in my table I'm going to note the current and then I'm going to keep notching down 0.56 and now we've got a little bit of current now change the scale of the current okay so that's on microamps the U means micro if we go right down so at 0.56 we've got 8.34 microamps. Now, in terms of real numbers, that's going to be 0 0.00000834. So you need to learn how to write micro down. Micro means one millionth. And we carry on going through our test. So 0.57. Twelve point three seven, and again. 0.58 and you can see the currents beginning to go up 16.34 0.59 now interestingly you can see the the ammeter has gone to a one that means it's out of range it means we have to notch it up to the next one on the scale so we're at 25 microamps now um, we so what happened here was I was at 100k on on the scale by notching it down to zero, it went up to 0.62. So I don't want that. So what you have to do is you have to use the next one on the scale. That's the 10K one there. I've notched that, and now we're at 0.6 of, an amp, uh, 0.6 of a volt. And we keep going to 0.61 and 0.61, and so on and so forth, all the way up to about 0.7, if you can achieve 0.7. I've adjusted mine all the way up to 0.8 actually and we don't get an awful lot of forward conduction um, at 0.8 so you could probably safely go up even further than that
about 200 milliamps at 0.83. Need to be pretty careful at this point. So at 0.83, 300 milliamps or so. So for the reverse direction, firstly turn off the power supply. And all you're going to do is you're going to connect the diode up the other way around. So I'll disconnect the power supply. And this time the black band will connect there. That's positive to black. Hope you can see that. So we've got reverse bias now because we've got negative to positive and positive to negative. We're going to connect up our power supply. Sorry, I we're going to connect up our voltmeter. Now, the Zener you're going to be using has a reverse voltage of 5.1 volts, I believe. So we're going to need to adjust the power supply high enough to take it, that into account. Firstly, adjust the resistance box all the way back to its previous values. Like so. And I would say take the power supply up to 10 volts. Give or take. It's not too critical. Um, at 10 volts, take your measurements, and it's the same process. So we'll skip down through. And we could already see that my prediction of this being a, a 5.1 volt diode is completely incorrect, so therefore it must be a 5 volt 6. 5 volt 6, we will see in a minute as we keep taking the resistance down. Once again, take it in steps of 0.1 of a volt. I'm just doing this very quickly to get the damn thing to conduct. And there we can see. At about 5.54, we start to get some conduction, and you can keep going down. And that's where the zener begins to break down and conduct current. So I would say take that up to about 5.6, 5.7 volts, if you can. And then, once again, it's a case of putting all your results in a table, both for forward bias and for reverse bias. When you've got when you've completed all your results, you need to plot them on a graph. Now, by far the easiest way to do this is in Excel, and I've done a video to show you how to do that. Or you can plot the graph by hand. But when you're finished, you should have a graph that looks something like this. This side of the graph here is the forward bias diode. So at about 0.6 of a volt we start to see significant conduction of current in this direction, positive current, positive voltage. This side of the graph is the reverse bias. Now for the Zener, the breakdown, where it breaks down and conducts, will be relatively low. R1's 5.6 volts. But you need to do this same um, you need to do this same test with, a, with another diode, a general purpose diode, and that will have a much higher reverse breakdown voltage, probably the one you're going to use about 50 volts or so. Now you can't do that in the, in the lab with our power supplies, so you're going to need to do the reverse bias for the general purpose diode in multi-sim.